Another integral battle, the first one, the integral of 1 minus tangent x over 1 plus tangent x. The second one, the integral of 1 over 1 plus tangent x. As we can see, for this one, it has less things than the first one, right? So maybe this is easier than the first one. But as usual, I will let you guys pause the video and try them first. Okay, in fact, that one's actually easier. Why? Because, keep in mind, sometimes when we want to do integrals, the more it's actually better. And that's exactly the situation right here. And let me demonstrate. As you can see, for this integral, it has tangent x, right? However, we don't just like to have tangent x, because we also want to have secant x, or maybe secant square x to help us out once in a while, right? However, I don't think we can come up with a secant x or secant squared x easily in this case. So let me not do that. But we do have another way to do it though. We can also rewrite this in terms of sine x and cosine x. That also work, right? So there's a point I want to make. Keep in mind, whenever we're doing integrals, tangent x and secant x, they get along. Another case is that sine x and cosine x, they also get along in integrals. So let me try to change this in terms of sine and cosine. So this is going to be the integral, 1 is just a 1, minus, for tangent x, we can write that as sine x over cosine x, and then this is over 1, plus this tangent x, let me write this as sine x over cosine x, and then we still have the dx, right? And we end up with a complex fraction, but this is no big deal, because we can just multiply the top and bottom by cosine x. Okay, that will take care of the complex fraction. Alright, after we do that, we will get the integral cosine x times 1 is just cosine x, right? And then this is minus sine x over cosine x times cosine x is just sine x. And this is over cosine x times 1, so that's cosine x. And then we add this times that, which is once again sine x dx, okay? And now what? Well, look at the denominator here. What's the derivative of cosine x? It's negative sine x, aha, uh -huh, right here. What's the derivative of sine x? Positive cosine x, aha, uh -huh, it's right here. So we can use u sub for that one, right? So the u equals to the whole denominator, which is the cosine x plus sine x, and then differentiate both sides, we get the derivative of this, which is negative sine x, and then the derivative of that, which is plus cosine x dx, right? And I'm not going to isolate dx because otherwise I'll run out of space, so let me do it this way right here for you guys. So this is going to be the integral, we'll take this integral into the u world, okay? As you can see, on the top here, if you pair all this up together, cosine x minus sine x, which is this part here, Right, we'll just rewrite it, like rearrange it, it's okay. Like the order of this and that is the same. So, this whole thing is just du, that's the whole point. So du on the top, over cosine x plus sine x, that's just u. So we're just integrating 1 over u, right? And when we do that, we get ln, absolute value of u. And we are done. But what's u? That. So the answer to this integral is just ln, absolute value, cosine x, plus sine x. And we're so done, so we put plus c at the end. This is it. Okay, so nice, right? And let's take a look of this one now. The integral 1 over 1 plus tangent x. Same strategy, let's write tangent x as sine x over cosine x and see what happens. So here we have integral 1 over 1 plus this is sine x over cosine x dx and still a complex fraction here, huh? So let's multiply the top and bottom by cosine x, okay? And when we do that, in this case, we'll end up with integral of just cosine x on the top over this times that, which is cosine x, and then we add it with this times that, which is just the sine x, okay? So, this one, what can we do? Unfortunately, this is not as nice as that one, right? As you can see, when you have this negative sine x right here, this is exactly the derivative of the bottom, so we can just do this. It works out nicely with u sub. So you see that in this case, u sub won't work, right? And um, what else did you guys try? You can comment down below and let me know. Um, maybe once you get to this stage, what did you try, okay? And um, this is hard. Right? Because u sub wouldn't work, and I don't really see any of the nice uh, trick identity that can help us out at the moment. So, I don't know. 
and this is how I like to think about hard questions, especially for integrals. I'm going to begin to ask myself this question. Wouldn't it be nice if I have an easier situation instead? So, wouldn't it be nice if I have a cosine x minus sine x over this instead? Why? Because we just did that, right? So let me put down what we like. So that's put down here. Okay. Let me write it down. Wouldn't it be nice if you have the cosine x but minus sine x right here on the top instead? Okay. And then let me keep the denominator to be the same, which is still the cosine x plus sine x. And this is still the dx. Okay. Well, what's the answer of this? It's just that, right? So let me write it down. This is the ln absolute value cosine x plus sine x. And let me not put down plus c yet because this is my focus. This is just the uh, middle steps, okay? So that's really nice, huh? If we have a minus sine x right here instead. What else is really nice? Well, let me just write this down again, okay? Integral of cosine x over cosine x plus sine x dx. If I can change the question, if I can just you know, uh, rewrite the whole question, wouldn't it be nice if I have a plus sine x right here as well? Why? Because as you can see, the top is exactly the same as the bottom. So this is just 1. And what's the integral of 1 in the x world? Just x. So this is also very nice. And the answer to that, once again, the inside is just 1. Integral 1 in the x world is just x. And I'm not going to put on plus c yet. Okay? Okay, so these two are the nice situations, right? And what good does this do to help us out? Well, look at the integrands. And especially when you don't have numbers right here, can we add the integrals together? Yeah. What if I add these two integrals together? What do we get? Let's take a look, okay? Okay, when you want to add the left-hand side together, you just, you know, add the uh, expressions inside, okay? But then it's still the integral. So let's do that here. You see, they have the same denominator. So when you add, of course, the denominator will stay the same, which is cosine x plus sine x. And the best part right here is that when you add this and that together, negative sine x and plus sine x cancel each other out, right? And we just have to combine these two things. Cosine x plus cosine x. What do we get? Well, that's 2. So let me put on 2 in the front. Cosine x. Hey, look at that. This is the same as that. And then on the right-hand side, let's just add up the answers together. Let me put on x first though. x plus that plus ln absolute value cosine x plus sine x. How is this? Well, are we done? Is this the answer to that? No, because we don't like this too. So what's the usual deal? Okay, let's just multiply by one half throughout this equation here. So multiply by one half here, and let's also multiply by one half here so that this and that will cancel. And you see, this is exactly the integral that we want, right? Cosine x over cosine x plus sine x dx, which is just one half, x plus one half, ln absolute value of cosine x plus sine x. And then we are done. And let me just write it here, okay? So the answer to this, which is just that I'm just copying down one more time, one half times x plus one half, ln absolute value, cosine x plus sine x. And we are so done right here. So plus at the end, and box this for the answer. Okay, so this is one of my favorite strategy. You ask yourself, wouldn't it be nice and try to relate the hard integral with an easier one that you have done before or a really easier one okay a really really easy one that's it okay hope you guys like it if you do hit that like button thank you that's it